Erev Tov, Chavri, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live and just got back here into Orlando this evening here trying to put together so much is breaking, so much is happening here. Really was not anticipating on trying to film until in the morning, but then the news that is breaking is just unbelievable. And I'm going to go in that, uh, go more into that tomorrow uh, with you. A couple of things. Real quick here, I just want to bring to your attention, of course, RT is already reporting Turkey vows to eliminate any threat after U.S. announces Kurdish border force inside of Syria. Now, it's a major step, and I, and I really want to go into this uh, greater detail tomorrow about what the U.S. has vowed to do. Uh, and, and friends, understand, I, I do support the Kurdish people, but what's happening right now is basically uh, on the latest announcement, the U.S. is actually talking about training a Kurdish border force that's going to protect the Iraqi border, uh, the Turkish border there along the line there, as well as the Euphrates River. Now, that's obvious that the U.S. is helping the Kurdish people to carve out Syria, a massive part of Syria, as part of uh, the state uh, or a state of Kurdistan, a future state of Kurdistan. And this is the only way you can look at it when you're looking at this here. I want to quickly pull up, pull up a uh, Google Maps so I can share that with you here. Let's go to Syria. Uh, just to kind of give you a bird's eye view of what we're talking about here. When you look at the country of Syria, right here following the Euphrates River, I mean, that's a third of the country itself that now the Kurdish forces, with the U.S. help, are going are making border forces to protect this border, the northern border, and of course the Euphrates from the Syrian government itself. I mean, it's totally absurd. Since when do you take a sovereign nation and just carve it out and make a new state for it for yourself? You know, I can understand, and, and again, I, I have a passion for the Kurdish people, but the Kurdish people in Syria have really only lived up here in this little tiny portion of Syria up here in the north. And why? because there's a strong Kurdish population in northern Iraq and also in eastern Turkey is a major Kurdish group of people right there. So to take serious country and to turn it into Kurdistan is completely wrong to begin with. Now, because the Kurds have been very successful in fighting ISIS from the beginning, I think that they should be given something and no doubt northern uh, uh, Iraq and that little portion there, all that should be, even part of Turkey, no doubt, should be part of a Kurdistan nation. Uh, but we know that that's not going to happen that way. But see, as they've got Syria completely tore apart, I guess the U.S. decided, let's make a Kurdistan here in order to justify our future attack on Damascus and destroy the rest of Syria altogether. That seems to be the obvious thing. Now, Turkey... Uh, is totally upset about all of this. Uh, and not only are they upset about this, and they have vowed, as RT is reporting, to eliminate any threat after U.S. announces this Kurdish border force in Syria. Turkey is making very good on that threat there. On our good friend Lorenzo here on Already Happened, he's posted this video right here. Massive amounts of Turkish forces are racing to the border of Turkey and Syria. Tanks, everything you can imagine. Looks like Turkey is getting ready to take on the Kurds. And I guess uh, the U.S. is truly becoming an enemy of Turkey as we go there. Now, speaking of that, let me just back up just a moment. A few days ago, we were talking about Turkey. We were talking about Turkey as being the ones involved in backing al-Nusra. We found out later it was al-Nusra that attacked the Russian base, the Himamim base and of course the TARDIS base there on the coastline, their naval port. Uh, Russia later comes back, President Putin actually says it was never Turkey that did it. But as we reported it, if you go back and look at the footage that we showed on this, one, we were actually showing you the very articles that were out there where the Russian government contacted Turkey because al-Nusra is a uh, rebel group that has been fighting against the Syrian government that the Turkish government has been backing from the very beginning. So I recontacted my source after that story began to change, especially with President Putin saying it wasn't Turkey. And as he said, we know who's doing it. We know who funded them. We know how much money they paid in order to put these drones on us. Well, I checked with my source. 
I said, now I'm not seeing anybody saying anything as of yet, and President Putin didn't seem to indicate who it was, other than we had the one article of the U.S. spy plane flying overhead, but there have been some that have suggested that Israel was involved. So I asked him, is it possible that Israel was involved? Because after all, I did see two articles, and I don't have those here today. I'll try to bring them out tomorrow when I do the broadcast here. We had two different articles that I was looking at, one of those articles happened to be uh, a man by the name of Ephraim, uh, Ephraim uh, Halevi. He is a former uh, Secret Service officer for Israel. Uh, not Secret Service, I'm sorry. Intelligence officer for Israel. And he had been stating that Israel had been supporting al-Nusra. Also, Israel back in December once again spoke about uh, supporting uh, as far as a humanitarian uh, group to supply medical help to al-Nusra and, of course, al-Qaeda affiliates uh, that are fighting against Bashar al-Assad. Now, they call this humanitarian, but if you remember, we reported this once before, uh, Sipi, uh, Le uh, Levni Sipi, who ran against Prime Minister Netanyahu in the election, the last election for Prime Minister, she was on RT News, and when asked about the aid that Israel was giving to uh, the fighters is, of course, she said, we don't ask what side they're fighting on. Well, then the RT commentator asked her flat out, would you give medical aid to Syrian soldiers? And she said, absolutely not. That's not very much humanitarian then, is it? Humanitarian doesn't care who the soldier is or who the civilian is. If there is a war going on, if you're there for humanitarian purposes, you help either side. And that was rather telling when Livni Zeppi, the former, uh, or she's actually, I believe, a Knesset member there, said what she stated, what she stated there. That let us know a completely different story there. So very troubling indeed. Now, of course, as we saw here in this video here that I shared with you from Lorenzo there, on already happened there, showing you all this military buildup that Turkey is doing down Syria's border uh, and the U.S. supporting them there. Now, of course, like I said, though, you know, is, is it actually, I, I didn't finish the statement about this, you know, could it actually be that Israel uh, helped in this support against the attack against the Russians there or to try or to tra test the resolve of Russians, Russia's military there, as I brought it out the other day? As I spoke with my contact there in Syria, he said that there is, he said there's always a possibility. He said you never know whose hands are supplying the money or the means to do so. But as he also stated, it is a clear fact though that Turkey still supports al-Nusra. So whether or not President Putin is just trying to play it down in order to keep that coalition between Turkey, Iran, and Russia going or not, well, that's about as any guess as good as anybody else's when it comes to that. But clearly, the latest move by the United States is only distancing uh, Turkey from the U.S. and certainly uh, could create an enemy uh, if that were to go on. Unless, as I've stated before, Turkey's playing a double hand here and only going to use this situation uh, to, to further an attack against Bashar al-Assad in the near future. Very difficult to say at this point here, but we do know that Turkey considers the Kurds as a terrorist group and have clearly nearly genocide the people inside of its own country there, fighting against innocent civilians that are totally unarmed in the eastern part of the, part of the province there, and now sending down a massive amount of weapons to, their, to the Syrian border uh, to confront these ISIS members. Uh, excuse me, Kurdish members, not, not ISIS members. I apologize for that. Uh, another issue, too, this, this becoming a major issue, and this is something I really want to go into. We put it on Israeli News Live on our Facebook page here, another RT article. Shane Thal Thousands Rally uh, Against Corruption in Israel After Netanyahu's Son Scandal, the video. A video is two years ago uh, that has surfaced there. Now, it's very troubling to me that Prime Minister Netanyahu's son, uh, for one, was in a, a, a uh, strip club, uh, and quite frankly, you know, I didn't even realize strip clubs existed in Israel. I know that they had bars and things like that, but I've never thought about it. You know, because one, I don't look for one in the first place. But it's a shame to begin with that Israel would even allow such a club. How degrading to women can that possibly be in the first place? But then on top of it, 
to find out that in this video talking about having to knock off the security guard if the video ever leaks, talking about uh, paying for prostitution. Oh my gosh. You know, when the leader of Israel, when his own son is talking like this to start with, what does it say about the nation itself? When yet there are Jews that have returned home to see the coming of the Messiah. And then to see this kind of ungodliness going on in the nation. And there's other things as well that have, that have come out about Prime Minister Netanyahu's son. Now, I realize he's an adult, 20, 26 years old. But you know, the whole point is, is he's still protected by the state, everything else. And then doing these type of things, making these kinds of statements. And no wonder why the people are rallying. And God bless them for rallying. I think they ought to rally as well to get rid of the strip clubs and to stop prostitution in the country as well. Something maybe somebody ought to think about. Uh, it's really sad to see. Uh, anyway, very troubling news that we're seeing happen here. Just wanted to quickly bring these things to your attention. In fact, I haven't even had a chance to put lapel mics on the, on the, on the camera or anything. Just got in, as I said, rushed in here to do this. Also, too, uh, the video I loaded yesterday. A lot of you enjoy that video. I appreciate that. Uh, some people made the comment about me wearing a kippah. I guess many of you do not realize the age of the video. It's been quite a number of years ago that I did that video. I just happened to run across it in my hard drive. thought I'd load it up for you because we were having a very difficult time with the internet where we were at. I took my wife out for a little bit to get a little bit break there. She's gone through a lot of medical treatments there and wanted to get her into some fresh air up into the Pine Mountain. It's not too far from where we are at right now in Orlando. So we wanted to be able to share take her up there and share a little bit of time there that she could enjoy. In fact, I loaded some pictures there she has on, on uh, our Facebook page there. You might enjoy looking at that there. But uh, uh, so we, the only thing I could really get uploaded while I was there was that particular video. And uh, no, I don't wear a tip anymore. That's when I was just a little bit more on the orthodox side before. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Shalom.